Hey guys, it's Katie. So I'm kind of in another block. And the way I get out of my blocks, as you know, is by doing techniques that don't don't have a lot of control to them to see what I can get and then I get inspired. So I wanted to use some really bright colors. So I thought of using, this is Cernet uh, fluorescent, their yellow fluorescent one, but it's quite bright, but it will darken up once it's baked. So I'm going to use that color. And then I was just kind of thinking of what other color I could use with it. And I was going through my binder here, which is hard for you to show, but I have, this is Primo. And I was thinking of a blue because what goes with yellow that mixes and makes a good color. Blue goes well. Reds also go well because um, red and yellow make orange. Uh, blue and yellow make green. So go with colors that will, will mix. So I was just going through my colors and trying to see what kind of blue. Now I plan on making a Skinner blend with white and black out of these. Would make I have the turquoise. I have this periwinkle, which is kind of purpley. Cobalt might look good. We have the ultramarine, which has more of a purple tone than cobalt, so I might avoid that. And we have the navy. And that's navy too. So I think we'll do cobalt because that and the yellow will probably make a nice green if they do happen to mix. So we're going to create a Makume Gane and. First thing, I'm just going to get these conditioned for a second. This one's soft, but the, the Cernet one is pretty crumbly. So let me get these warmed up and get some black and some white ready. Okay, so we'll start with the blue one first. So I have some black and white slightly conditioned here. And I had a sheet of blue, let's say about this big. We want equal amounts of each, roughly. Again, does not need perfect need to be perfect. And you can do the whole triangle thing. I'm just going to do the teardrop blend, as you know. So, white. Just folding it up. Oh, I had some black on my finger, but that's okay. On camera, it looks like my white doesn't get that dirty, but it does. So, you're not the only one. And I probably have some blue on my hand just from already doing this. Roll it in a ball. Bring it down to a point. That. And then go fat to skinny, fat to skinny. Do the same thing with the blue. Now we're going to be creating, like I said, a Makume Gane. And we're also going to be doing the torn paper or watercolor technique. And um, I think this type of Makume Gane, I did watch someone do it on YouTube when I was first learning. I want to say it was Day or Kaliana. So, but I'm not 100% positive on that. She did something with jelly rolls. I'm just flattening them out a little bit. So white, blue, black. But again, use whatever colors you want. And I'm going to do the same thing, exactly the same thing with the neon color too. Now I do want most of the blue to be a light blue but we'll work it out as it goes. Okay, so I'm gonna put this through my pasta machine on the thickest setting with keeping your lines vertical so that this end goes in where all of your colors are gonna to touch the um, rollers first, okay? So you made it longer and then you wanna fold up. Always keep your colors vertical, fold up. I always give it a little push on the ends and then run it back through, fold first, where all of your colors are touching the roller. And then just keep going that way, vertical away from you, fold up. Give the ends a little push, just to keep it a little narrower if you push the ends. And that will also help this hump in the middle if you push the ends in. And there is different ways. You can rotate it, you can flip it back and forth. Um, to prevent that hump, like like literally put it in one way on this side and then the other. The problem is with that is if I'm trying to keep this white nice and clean and I put it on where the black's been running through, it's going to tip my white. So I usually keep the white on the same side of my roller 
every time and then I just push like I said on these edges and that should keep this hump from getting too too big okay I'm gonna blend this up until I'm happy with it some people are happy with more streaky some people like it more blended so wherever you're happy I'll be back so my blue one's done and I was just doing my yellow one now I have a little too much white here even though I'm not done my blend I just want to add a little more of this yellowy color so I'm just making a little triangle here and I'm gonna put it like this right in the corner and then continue blending it I'll run it through once so that I can blend in now it just hit the end of my machine so whatever got a little weird shaped got sucked in my rollers now because I have a little extra there that's fine but you can add to it as you go you can add to your blend like if you're ever not happy and you want more white you could add a triangle of white black but I want less white because this is such a pale color that the white eat, kind of eats it up. So that's why I just added a little bit more. And then as I work it, you'll start to see it kind of mix in and blend in. So I just wanted to let you know that I did add a little bit more of the yellow. Now, again, I watched this tutorial when I first started so probably a year ago so I, I may not be doing it how she's doing it but I believe she was the one I watched not that she's the one that created this I have no clue who did or who didn't um, but I believe it was Kaliana who I learned Makume Gane from so oh, I definitely did not stack that very good um, I'll just throw that out there but I don't know if I'm following her steps perfectly. Now we did create a Makume Gane with regular colors. We've done it with jelly rolls. Um, and I just released the video yesterday where we did the mica shift with the end of a, I, what I was going to do as a Makume Gane or the hidden magic one. Except for I wasn't going to use a stamp, or I didn't use a stamp, and I didn't even, even end up making the Makume Gane because I thought it looked like, like a bamboo or something. Um, but we've already done those, so I wanted to try this and see, try my hand at this, because I've never done it. And you can see the yellow starting to mix in there. I know it's really hard to tell on camera, but I can see it starting to blend in there. So I'm just going to keep blending everything, and... Um, keep moving things along okay there's my blend now if I was smart about this I know yellow and black make some type of green I probably would have laid out let out a little less of this black kind of made either less of it added less black or even done gray instead of black but I'm pretty happy with that um, there is a streak of white in here I think that might actually be cool so I'm going to leave this as it is. Now we're going to be creating some jelly rolls just like we did in the basic jelly roll tutorial the other day. So the way I do it so I don't get much air trapped in is I cut these in strips. Now some people will just fold it. I have a hard time with just folding it um, because I tend to get a lot of air trapped in it. So I will uh, cut it like this and just kind of flip it over on each other. And then maybe fold this end one. Just because it's a little. And it's only one fold. And it's not even a full fold. Okay. And it doesn't matter how many you do. But again, do it however you prefer. If you like to just fold it on top of each other, then that's what I would do. Um, I just get a lot of air bubbles when I do that in a jelly roll. So I tend to just cut and stack like this. 
Now we want to stretch this out so it can fit through our machine from light end to dark end. So we're elongating this. And we're going to take it down in settings, hopefully from, um, hopefully fairly thin, but again, depending on the time of year and how hot it is and what clay you're using, you know, as thin as you can get it. I usually can't get it to a nine because I don't feel comfortable. So usually like a six or a seven is the thinnest I go when I make, we're not making jelly rolls, sorry, when I make blended rolls. So that one should be able to fit on a setting zero without straining my machine too much. Same thing with this one. Okay, and then again, from dark end in first to light end. Starting at a zero, and then we're gonna work down in our um, settings. Until you get the thinnest setting you can possibly get, okay? So this is on a setting six right now. And on this one, I put the light on the inside, and on this one, I'm going to put the dark on, um, on the inside. So I'll start with a dark end first, and then just simply roll it up. We've done a blended roll. You can do a lot of things with basic. Basic canes are what make complex things. So you have to be able to do the basics. Don't just watch, as I've said before. You cannot just watch someone do the basics. You need to be able to do it and do it yourself and do it well. It may look simple, but each step can be kind of hard. So make sure you've done it yourself before you jump into a really difficult project. Okay. And then we're just gonna flatten these down. Okay. And I'm gonna reduce this a little bit, but kind of as a, a square, because I do have some air in there. So I wanna get the air out. So starting in the center and pushing straight, I'm just kind of flattening it. Then I'll do this side too. Try to push the air out the ends. And then once you do that, you can kind of square it off. Same thing with this one. Just flatten up to the end. That way any air in there hopefully comes out. Just use your palm or your roller, whatever you want to use. Or an acrylic block. It's okay if you don't have even. This is, you know, if it's not perfect. Now we're going to kind of slunch it back down into a, like, slug. Or a little square block. It does not take much. You know, really point these corners to make this thing square, as square as you can. Doesn't need to be perfect. I kind of want them about the same size. Again, does not need to be perfect, but about the same size. Then we're going to slice these. <clears throat> so we're going to start slicing them. And it doesn't matter your thickness, just try to keep them even. So we're going to slice all of them like that. And hopefully, you know, most of our air should be out of the middle. On the end one that I cut, there's a little spot right there, but that's why I just reduced it down some. I think that one will be fine. Let's actually cut this goofy end off just a little bit, and we'll use that, so don't, don't get rid of that. Just because it's a little thicker than the other ones. But we can still use that.
So maybe take a really thin end slice would probably be easier in the beginning. And then cut these. Now if you pull outwards on your blade just a hair, it sometimes helps things go through. It's like really sticking, especially since we just worked with this. Okay. Now we have these. Now what we're going to do is flatten these out a little bit. Now they are probably double the thickness of my pasta machine. So I'm going to take them down by hand first, trying to keep them square if I can help it just because it makes it a little easier when we go to stack these, but it, again, doesn't need to be perfect. And then you're gonna run it through your machine. So on a setting zero, you'll run it from here to here, and then you'll rotate 90 and do a setting one, rotate two, rotate three, rotate four. And let me see how thin, let's see how thin I wanna get it. So let me do a zero first in one direction. That was a zero, didn't do much. Do a one in the other direction. I'm gonna do a two in the other direction. Three. Four. <clears throat> I can get my setting to go on four. Maybe a five is where we'll go. Yeah, I think a five is thin enough. So we'll we'll get every one to a setting five. Okay, looks cool, doesn't it? So they're all rolled out and ready to go. This is just a piece of scrap here. I also have a little bit of that cobalt mixed with some scrap blue to get this kind of bluish color um, because I'm going to use it as a, as a buffer color, but I think I already have too much black, so I'm not going to use black. And then I have some of the yellow color. So all we're going to begin doing is stacking these light on dark, dark on light, which is why we did them separately. Now, if you have really uneven pieces and you need, like, say you have two of these and they have to go like this, then do two of those, you know? These are all fairly even, which is nice, but I also might wanna just get a different looking effect here and there, so I might cut one of these in half. just to see what I can get. Maybe take this little scrap piece that I had, put that in the middle.
you know, and play around. See if you want to add a solid color in between or what you would want to do. <clears throat> I feel like I kind of want to go this way. Because it's still pretty much light over here, so I still want to go. I don't know, I just want to switch a couple layers up here and there. And then, so that's our stack. Okay. And then for the buffer layers, this one's on a four, and this one is on a three. Okay, so all we're going to do is I want to put yellow on, so put some yellow on this. Because you always lose your end slices, you know what I mean? We always tend to lose them. So if you put a scrap layer, and you can use scrap if you want, but I'm going to use colors. At least on the bottom, you would use scrap, but on the top, you want to, if you're going to cut through this, which we're going to do, you want to use a color that would push down into it that you would like, which is why I'm using a thicker of the yellow, because when we put our cutters through this, I'm hoping the yellow will get pushed down through some, rather than like a black and white buffer layer. And then I'm going to put blue on top of that, and then I'm going to put this blue on the bottom. So that way, if I lose a slice on the bottom, it's this kind of not-so-pretty blue color. It's not a bad blue color. It's just not my favorite. I would rather keep this. So then on the bottom, let's stick a layer of this as well. So on the top, we have yellow against the stack, and then the layer of blue. And, and on the bottom, we just have a layer of blue. Now you can trim to get a perfectly beautiful stack right now if you want to. You can trim off all these goofy, uneven edges. I just don't tend to do that. I have a little air bubble, hang on. Now I am gonna give it a slight roll because I wanna make sure I push out all the air between these stacks. I tried not to get any in there, but I'm not perfect. Okay, let me grab some cutters, and we'll begin slicing this. Okay, so we have a couple of things here. One I have not used is a comb. I've had it down here, but I, I've used it for texture, but I've never used it in this. Usually I just poke dots, so let's use it. And then I have some football-shaped cutters, but again, you can use anything you want. Now, let's see. So let's use the thick end, and this is one where there's thick and thin ends. So let's do that. Let's do, um, thick. Let's see if I can get it out. It's okay if it pulls apart. You can just put it back together. Thick. Thick. Let's do thin. I just ordered a new office chair. I'm very excited about it. Thin. Because I have this old office chair that my grandmother-in-law gave me. And it, you hear it. And it's so uncomfortable. Actually, let's put one more thin one over here. Maybe another thin. And let's use these football cutters here. And I'm actually going to use the blunt end. Now this is a thick stack, so I'm going to use an acrylic block if I can. Good. And pull it out. 
And now I did not, again, did not use the cut end, I used the, the blunt end. And then I have downgraded sizes, so let's try these. Let me see if I can get it stuck in there. Because you don't want to hurt your hand. And every Makumegami is going to come out different. It really will. Even if you try to make the same one twice, it just doesn't. Oop. Needs a bit fatter. I don't want to make a dent in that if I can help it. Too fat. Too fat. I need something fatter to push this out with. Stick it back in. And then maybe some dots. Let's put a dot here, dot here, two smaller dots here, here. Maybe like that. Let's just keep it like that and see what happens. So now we got to push it back together to get rid of all of these holes. So just begin compressing it from the edges. And this will also distort it some again. Kind of get the clay moving. Once you can pick it up, then kind of just pick it up and reduce it like you would like a square with your hand. See, we're closing up our holes here. And it does not need to be perfect. And you can see how we drag down through. I wonder what it's going to look like. You never know what it's going to look like. Now, if you can let this rest for a couple of minutes, it will be easier to cut if it's rested. So I'm going to give it just a slight roll just to flatten off the top and bottom. The bottom should be flat, but the top at least, because it was all lumpy. Now this is a lot of clay. I don't usually use this much when I'm doing something, but why not? Because even if I blend this up, I'm still going to get some kind of blue like this, so... Okay, I'm going to let this rest for a couple minutes, I think. And just because it'll be easier to slice. Let me pick up my stuff, maybe a minute. Okay, so when you're cutting your makumegane, you want to start slicing where you put your pattern in, okay, wherever you impress. Not these sides, because if you slice these sides off, you're going to get, let me show you. If you slice like this, this is what you're going to get. Cool pattern, but not what we're looking for. We're looking to slice across the top or the bottom, but where you impressed your indents in, okay? So I have a couple tiles set on the side here. Now I find it's easier if I stand it up like this for myself rather than drag it like this. But again, you can try to cut whole slices and get an even or you can gouge in to get different depths. So try two different things. So again, the first couple of slices, we're going to have the buffer layer in there. Okay, which is just that yellow and blue. And then hopefully we should get into our jelly rolls. It's still pretty soft though. Ooh. Kind of cool. thin one. I'm going to move these off to these tiles. So this is our cutter. These are our what the comb did over here. The big comb and the little ones. Okay. 
Now again, some people cut like this and just kind of gouge into it. So just take like, obviously be careful of your finger. And they just take pieces like this. Ooh, that side's pretty, pretty, pretty. I'm going to do a solid strip. That's where I flipped it. So where I flipped the slice where I didn't put the black on the outside, I put it on the inside, like the light on the in That's where I flipped it, those couple slices. Oh, my roller's in the way. And it is hard to get a full slice once it gets starts getting thinner. Especially I'm trying to stick it down on my tile. But... but the nice thing about this is we're gonna Put them all together so it doesn't really matter so that's where that piece came off of this one so sometimes you can oh, stop folding i know that one came from there get kind of whole again. Definitely getting down there. fun to watch each slice and how it comes out. So that's the scrap right there. And I'm also going to take it off of here because I didn't cut that very evenly. But at least now I got rid of all this blue scrap and I still have a fairly good sized slice here. Wonder what's under this. Nice. Okay, so we got some pretty cool pieces. <clears throat> Even just these on the top here. And then you lay all these sheets out together to make a veneer. Even your bad cuts, you know, you can keep them and that's what I use for fill-in. This isn't a bad cut at all. These ones are a little messed up. These are the, probably the best ones here. This side looks really cool. This is one of the last slices. Really cool on that one. That one's really neat. Thin but neat. And then again, we have the buffers here, which I also think look pretty cool. So, you know, we'll put these together. You know, I'll probably take the scrap that I just cut off the end, all this blue and then maybe that first slice off the side that I showed you and roll all of this up together and probably 
this part right here that doesn't have much going on. And roll this out and we'll lay them on a sheet maybe. I have some more of this blue. And we'll lay it down and see what we get. Now I did mix in some other scrap I had with this. And it's on a setting 5. So a fairly thin setting. I just want to lay a couple sheets on this. This one I really like here. Look at both sides, see what you like better. This one's really thin. This corner right here. Just gonna lay this junk piece on it just to bulk it up a little bit. That. That one's super pretty. Here is. Mm. And I have a little gap of blue in here, so we see. So all these really not great pieces, that's where I cut from and kind of patch in. And obviously we still have more. This one would probably go nicely with this one here if we cut off some blue. Hang on. This one we gotta get thinned out. Get it all the same height. You could definitely cut a couple things out of this for sure. And then just start rolling it through your pasta machine, but rotating 90 degrees each time. Okay, so start on a zero, just in case you have fixed spots. Which I know I do, because I'm not perfect at cutting. And then I'm going to rotate, and we'll do the next setting down. And then just keep rotating until one, it's all even, or two, you like the look of it. That looks really cool right there. Let me go one more time. Just to be honest, I don't really oh, I really like that spot. This even looks cool in between here. There's a lot of cool spots on that. With this other one, let me take. 
take this piece because it's pretty junk. And then the rest of these scraps and a couple of these. I almost kind of want to do this apart with this yellow. So I'm going to cut this strip of blue off here. I want to do it with this yellow one too. Just because I think it looks neat. A little thick right here, so I'm gonna take it off the back side. There's one there. Play with all of them, even your buffer ends. these last few. Let's see if we can get those to merge together and look cool. Slicing off a little of that end part. A little thick right there. It's just a little thin where it's going to butt up with this one. We'll take it over. So let me put a piece like that. See what we get on that. And keep rotating. you're not using the sheet as a whole well normally you'd be taking pieces that you like you know say you want to cut a design right <clears throat> so this was my last few cuts right that I wasn't super thrilled with well why wouldn't that work as a piece why wouldn't that work as a piece that could work as a piece you know so there's all kinds of parts here that look really cool that you can use you know as a pendant or as a backing or as an inside of a bracelet or a bowl so you know even run your last pieces out because what are you going to do with them other than mix them up and make a new color of clay so you might as well run them through and see if you can get any spots of it that you really like the pattern of okay so we're done with this makume gane inspiration moment 
and I'm actually really thrilled with a lot of this this pattern in here. Actually, kind of with all of them, even that one. That was just the simple. Uh, buffer layer. You can keep these until you need like say just a backing if you wanted to. Cut some slices out of them and then use it as the backing. You know the ones you don't like use it as a backing in a project. Kumegane is fun because you never know what the heck you're gonna get. You really, really don't. Okay. So I'm going to get these put in a sheet protector. And, um, or maybe I'll cut some pieces out of them. And then I'll come back later. And depending how long this video is going, we'll do some watercolor techniques two different ways. Actually, maybe three. I don't know. Because there's multiple different ways to do it. Um, yeah. So I just wanted to show you some of the pieces I made. Now I cut some fronts out and then I also cut some backs out, so they're double sided. They haven't been sand or, sanded or resined. We're off this week from the coronavirus and it sucks because my phone only has so much memory to record and I can't upload at home because my internet, we only have one internet provider and it's so slow. So at work it takes me about three hours to upload one of my videos. At, home I got to 48 hours and it was only 20% uploaded so I have to pick and choose because I'm going to be home all week so I might as well play with clay right so I just wanted to show you that quick I won't show you them finished but I'll post them on my Facebook page when they're done or one of them at least I think I'll probably keep this one or this one I really like both sides of this one I do like this one as well. That's probably the back, definitely. They're all quite pretty, actually. So I chose the parts I liked the most for the front, and then I put the ones I didn't like as much on the back. 